Hey, howdy folks, Ben with Tussie Landscaping. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to do the plumbing on a pondless water feature. I've had a few questions on folks asking how we put in the spillways. So we're gonna talk about from the pump all the way to the spillway and later how to put this 24 inch spillway in and get it concealed so that it looks good. Cause a lot of times you see these just kind of sitting up on top. They're not hidden very well. It's a bad result. So we're gonna to talk today about how to install those so that you can't really tell where the water comes from. This feature is a 12 foot uh, pondless waterfall and it has an Aquascape SLD 5 to 9,000 gallon pump on it. We already have the basin put in behind me with the aqua blocks and the Aquascape pump bolt. I'll silicone up this fitting. We're using three inch line. You can use two and some of the features we do, but I have two spillways on this one, so I don't want to restrict any flow. Come over here to our pump vault. When we put in this basin, we sink the pump vault down six inches below the bottom of the basin so that it utilizes all the water in the basin. And I like to put my pump in this way. That's the intake of the pump. I like to put it in this way because if you put it in this way, it can suck up against the side of the, of the pump vault or even like, cause it has a, smooth surface there and it can suck up against there. So if I put my pump in like that, you'll have a lot of space there so it won't suck up against the side of the vault. And then these are the other two pieces I use. This is a three inch schedule 4090 and a dual union. So you can dis the pump, disconnect the pump real easily. And I use schedule 40 down in the box. We use Aquascape's uh, black flex line, but I don't like to use it in the, in the vault because it it can bend, it's nice when it's rigid. So I will just plumb these together and bring that up to here like that. I'll show you in a bit and we'll drill it out the side here. And then this three inch line will go to the top of the water feature and finally to the spillways. Okay, here's what we got. I put this dual union on top. Now I remember when we first started doing this, we put them down here which is when you come to hook up your pond in March, it's super uncool to be reaching down here in this 20 degree water and running a dual union. If you have them up on top here like this, you can do it most times without getting wet, depending on how full your vault is. Yes, I slobbered glue all over, but it works. So there you go. That's a typical setup. We did start adding like a two foot piece of schedule 40 out here before we go to flex pipe because what happened on some of the features was it would be perfectly lined up at, when you do it at first, but then dirt would settle here and after a while this thing would be all jacked up like that or like this and it was hard to it was hard to hook up your pump. So we found that adding a little piece of schedule 40 in here gives a, it's, it's a little more rigid and it's less likely to move around. From here out, we'll use flex pipe up for the top. So stay tuned, we'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Okay, so initially I told you I was running two inch lines because I was gonna do two spillways. Then I built two waterfalls here. And then I was like, I don't need two spillways. They're the same hike. I still get two waterfalls with one spillway. So I'm going to cap that line or run it back in the other two inch line and they'll both come in here. So when you're placing the spillway, so here's what you usually see people do. They take this spillway and I want the waterfall here. So boom. Right there is where it goes. And it, it ends up being like the highest item and it's hard to hide. And yeah, it, it doesn't look right because this, the water, the source of the water is just from the very peak of the waterfall. So what you can do, these can be way, way back here. I actually end up building a little bit of a pool here. So this dictates water hike. So the top of this is actually level with here. And I'll put my bulkhead on here. I'll show you how to do that. And the liner comes all the way up here. And I'll even put a rock across the top. So it's like completely hidden. And the water just kind of wells up from the bottom and spills out over the top. It's sunken and out of sight. These things, if you do them right, are completely watertight. So even though this point is lower than the spillway and it could run back, if you do them right, they're completely watertight. 
But I'm not planning on really having any water there. This gets all foamed off here. The, uh, we take a foam gun along here, I'll show you then. And that gets all sealed off. Even above here, it gets sealed off. Now foam will leak some water. If we do get some back here, it'll be very little. And the liner back here is going to be higher than the spillways everywhere, except for around this bulkhead. And I'm going to do that one properly so it won't leak. So you're good to go. So once again, the name of the game is instead of having this thing right at the top of the waterfall where it just seems like it should go, move it back, move it away, move it around the corner, do something so it's not the highest point. But when you do that, be careful that you're not creating a leak. Okay, so bulkhead time. This is basically a way to get water inside your liner without having to go over the top and not creating a leak. You have a soft washer and a hard washer. This is hard plastic, this is soft rubber. The soft rubber one goes on the inside and then I'll take my knife and I don't wanna make this all tight like that and cut out. You can loosen it up because what happens, well, I'll show you. I put the rubber seal on, flip this liner back here and take a new knife blade, carefully cut around here. You don't wanna get it too big. This can be a little bit tricky. Some people will actually put a liner patch on top of this before they do this, just so it doubles up the liner and it gets a little thicker. It's less likely for the liner to stretch. So here's what we have. Soft rubber washer, liner, hard washer, and then this threads on to squeeze it together like a sandwich. This is reverse thread. And I usually just hand tighten these. Get them good and snug. A good way to tell if it's tight enough if, if you see a a little bulge in the rubber washer. Once it starts to bulge a little bit, we've got it tight enough. There. And now, the reason I moved it up so far is because now I have slack down here. And if this spillway ever settles, it doesn't pull the rubber really tight. If you pull it tight and you put your bulkhead in and then it settles, it wants to tear the liner out of the bulkhead. So I now I have a lot of slack in here so that if it wants to settle, it's not gonna stretch the liner tight. That'll always be loose. And there we go. I can run my plumbing line in here now, which runs down to the pump that you already saw. Well, first I need to silicone this in. That's my two inch slip and boom, there we go. I'll show you how I'm going to completely finish this off yet with foaming the inside and putting a rock on top and doing the edge work around here. So here is finished spillway. This is kind of what you want. It's sunken in, it's down low. What I showed you when I put in the bulkhead or how I did the bulkhead. And then I bring the liner up all the way to the top. I set some rocks and stuff on top of the spillway. You can see that. And that'll give me something to bring the liner up against so I can get it high enough. The liner is up behind these rocks that I placed right here. So it's up above here, higher than the spillway rocks. And then I set stuff on top of the spillway and I put some foam down. I foam this all off so the water doesn't go back there but goes out over here. And if it does go back there, the liner is still higher than, than water level in here. So put a little bit of foam and moss on and now suddenly it's, the water just pulls up in here and spills out around here. You don't even know there's a spillway there. The idea to get a spillway that looks good is to not know not know the source of it. You don't know where the water comes from. If your waterfall is here, don't put your spillway here. Move it back, do a little bit of rock work on the edges and sink it down as good as you can. And that is the key to getting a good looking spillway. So that's how we do our spillways. If you have uh, any questions, uh, reach out in the comments. And um, I find it hard to explain some of this stuff. It's just stuff that I know how to do. <laughs> it's hard to explain how to do it. But if you have any questions, uh, reach out in the comments and I will try to answer them as well as I can. Subscribe to the channel and we'll give you more pro tips for building natural and beautiful water features. See you in the next one.